Much like that time I tried to launch a series of videos detailing acts of kindness towards Adam Cleary in our comments section, sometimes personal projects fail miserably. It happens, especially in Hollywood, where vanity projects designed to inflate the ego or simply get one of your mates over in the business go belly up on a regular basis. And it's not just the Adam Sandlers of this world trying to go on holiday and call it a film shoot, but actual credible stars as well. Now, not all of the films on this list are what you'd call train wrecks, but most fall under the ooh, what were you thinking category. So with this in mind, I'm Jules for WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most cringeworthy vanity projects in movie history. Number 10. Swept Away Oh, Madonna, no matter how hard you tried, neither the critics nor the fans accepted you as a credible actress. And boy, how you tried. When she teamed up with husband and director Guy Ritchie for a remake of the 1974 film Swept Away, the world held its breath. But only for the sake of trying to pass out and die so they wouldn't have to watch this tripe. Swept Away's levels of terrible acting and poor direction surpassed even the most cynical critic. It's the most notable of her failures simply because of how she's portrayed in the film, as if God himself could have not created a more perfect woman. Blech. Number 9. The Brown Bunny Actor, editor, cinematographer, writer, producer and director of The Brown Bunny, Vincent Gallo, clearly believes he's more than capable of filling in and doing a better job than most other professionals in their field. And in truth, he's turned out some decent efforts, but Brown Bunny was not one of them. In this, Gallo portrays a motorcycle rider searching for his lost love, but is most famous for its unsimulated sex scene. Well, that and the fact that Roger Ebert labelled it as the worst film in the history of cans. Yeah, ouch. Number eight, After Earth. I hate this film with a passion, and passion is not a word that you could ever hope to tar Will Smith with in this flick as he comes across like the vehicle that he actually is for his son. Thanks to more than slight allusions to his Scientology beliefs, the film is a mishmash of ideas that comes across as dull and half-baked. That, and the fact that Jaden Smith's squeaky voice and laughable acting is front and center, something that Will really wanted the audience to get behind, but you'd be hard-pressed to find anyone who sat through nearly two hours of this nepotistic drivel and came out smiling. Number 7. Glitter Mariah Carey, note assassin and recognized diva, also tried much like Madonna to break into Hollywood and branch out into acting. Comparing glitter and swept away, though, it's like trying to decide whether you'd rather be stabbed with a used needle in the eye or shove a firecracker down your urethra in that neither is a good option. Now, this being said, Mariah can sing, it's, you know, what she's good at, but unless you're up for a particularly masochistic viewing experience, you should probably steer well clear. Number 6. Cutthroat Island Another husband and wife vanity project which should have really never been produced in the first place was Cutthroat Island, a swashbuckling misfire starring Gina Davis and directed by her then-husband, Rennie Harlan. Cutthroat Island is said to have single-handedly ruled out the possibility of any pirate-related films until Pirates of the Caribbean came along many years later. It it was that f bad. And it's not hard to see why. Notable as it is for its uniformly awful performances, substandard action sequences, and a story that's almost impossible to care about. The sad thing about Cutthroat Island is that not only did the film sink itself at the box office, but it also contributed to the untimely sinking of the studio to which it was attached. Carol Co. Pictures, who were known for giving their directors more freedom and had brought to the screen Terminator 2 Judgment Day and Total Recall, you absolute b. Number 5. The Green Hornet Bless Seth Rogen, he just he just wanted to make a superhero film based on one of his favourite childhood characters. But the problem is, is that while he's pretty much funny across the board in most things, he's the thing that stood out like a sore thumb in this movie. Being the star, co-writer and executive producer, it becomes increasingly clear just how much of his shtick was added, and as a result it fails both as a comedy and as an action film. Even the usually excellent Christoph Waltz is unmemorable as the villain, and making him look bad is certainly some achievement. Number 4. The Postman The fact that when Kevin Costner announced his next project, Modern West, felt the need to add that it wasn't a vanity project shows just how badly he's been hit by this in the past. After a string of hits from The Untouchables and Dances with Wolves through to Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves and The Bodyguard, it was only a matter of time before Costner churned out a truly bloated and self-indulgent movie to satisfy his ego. True to form, he delivered not one, but two huge budget vanity project flops. Waterworld, which has since made its money back thanks to the theme park rather the same name, and The Postman. The Postman is a monumental testament to the power of an actor's ego to drain all good sense out of a movie. 
Critic Gene Siskel hit the nail on the head perfectly, saying that this film really should have been called Dancing With Myself. Number three, The Mirror Has Two Faces. Jesus, what a movie. The cinematography for this film is just weird, lingering on Barbara Streisand like they forgot to turn the camera off. Plus, she's lit in this way that looks like they've smeared the camera with Vaseline in order to get that super complimentary soft focus. Then you realise that Streisand directed this herself, and it all makes sense. It's a textbook example of a leading lady vanity project, centering on the story of an ugly duckling who learns how to be beautiful once again, only only a woman so thoroughly obsessed with proving to the world that she's still beautiful could make such a movie, and I've not seen a flick with this much desperation since your mother's last porno. Poor horse, man. He never saw it coming. There's my one per list. Number 2. Battlefield Earth To say the end result of this somewhat twisted vanity project was an unmitigated disaster would be an understatement. Battlefield Earth is a cacophony of terrible acting, awful sets, incredibly poor direction, and utterly laughable dialogue wrapped up in one of the most absurd plots ever to grace the screen. Oh, and also it apparently came from Travolta's own Scientology views, so yeah, that's a thing. Throughout it all, Travolta himself hams it up in what has to be one of the most painfully embarrassing performances of his career. Needless to say, the Hollywood studios didn't want anything to do with it, with one referring to it accurately as an $80 million vanity project for Travolta. The critics were less kind, scoring it as one of the lowest-ranking sci-fi films ever. And number one, The Room. Now let it be known, I bloody love The Room. I've seen it several times across the globe with different groups of people, and it always manages to instill the same feverish joy as it did the first time I saw it. But I have to admit, it's absolutely bloody awful. It's so utterly bonkers, though, that it's grown a cult following over the last few years. Written, produced, directed by and starring Tommy Wiseau, the room cost $6 million to make, but was rejected by agents far and wide because no one wanted to take it on. It's only when reading The Disaster Artist by Greg Sestero, who played Mark in that film, that it becomes clear just how much of a misguided vanity project this truly was. And truth be told, vanity projects don't get much more unintentional intentionally funny than The Room. The Force is with us. What Culture Star Wars is our brand new channel dedicated to all things Star Wars. We got lists, we got news, we got editorials, we've got ups and downs. We'll be covering everything to do with Star Wars past, present and future. It doesn't matter whether you're a prequels kind of person, an original trilogy purist, or if you just really love the sequels. If you love Star Wars, this will be a safe positive space to come and relax, chug some blue milk, and maybe even have a death stick or two. In the meantime, it would be very droopy McCool of you if you could subscribe to the channel and follow us on social media so you don't miss any of our uploads going forward. That's all for now, though. I've been Ewan, and until next time, may the Force be with you. Bye.